So I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is um, Monday, June 4th, 2018. Uh, some more town select board. We have a full board. Um, and tonight's meeting, we're, we're starting with a public hearing for the uh, relocation of mm -hmm. Trail 17. Uh, otherwise, it had been known as Blodgett Trail, but uh, uh, legal name Trail 17, access relocation. We also got town attorney Paul Gillis. He is uh, on the speaker phone. Paul, can you hear us? I can hear you fine. Thank you. All right. So um, <coughs> tonight at 5 o'clock, we did a site walk um, over at the proposed new proposed trail. Uh, this has been something that has been, I would go on upwards of uh, six or seven years since I got on the board. Uh, there was questions on, on this trail. Uh, we did a survey, um, found out where the, the original trail uh, ultimately was located, and uh, since have worked with the landowner, Cal Blodgett, to relocate that trail so it does not um, go through basically his septic area or the corner of his garage. Um, so it is uh, just a trail relocation. We also pointed out tonight where the temporary easement is on the corner of the case property. Um, and that's to be just used for uh, simple access if there's any bridge or permanent access that goes uh, through the, uh, indi the indicated trail, which was just uh, east. Of that entrance. At this point, uh, Paul, is there anything you want to add? No, it's a good beginning. Uh, so at this point, we'll take um, any I guess, questions or um, concerns. Let me suggest uh, that before we hear from anyone, you swear them in. Okay, so if there's anyone here um, that is uh, intending to speak tonight, uh, I'd like to swear you in, uh, or Paul can actually swear you in. If you could uh, raise your right hands. Ready? All ready. ready. swear to tell the, uh, the mm -hmm. group. Case As a group, yes. Oh. I'm sorry? Paul, can you go over that? We had a question. So this is as a group, yes. So if you plan on ready. providing any testimony or speaking, um, please do listen. One more time, Paul. Affirmative by everyone. All right. Now um, we'd be happy to take testimony. Is there anyone who would like to um, just state your name? And Scott Morrow, Wingley Forest Street, acting as a representative to Montgomery Timber Company. Um, so in, uh, in 2007, we used, I'm going to go up the, up the road, just in 2007, we used an access point from the mountain road across a stretch of land over the brook, <coughs> a temporary bridge that we placed in. We uh, worked with Cal on that and um, came around the corner and and put the bridge in, did a logging job. And um, at the end, we took the bridge out. Moving up the road, we were not aware at the time that the X, the trail, number 17, is where it was shown to us by the select board this evening at the location that we looked at, which is the location of the septic in the corner of the house. We looked at the, um, the trail that's proposed, which is a couple hundred yards up the road, which is about 300 feet long, and uh, is in excess of 22%, is, we'll call it 22% slope from the north side of the brook up to the 
so-called exist the so to this existent tra legal trail. Uh, as a representative of Montgomery Timber Company, we'd like to we object to the option of moving to the proposed trail as unless the town is willing to pay for all improvements and make it with an acceptable water quality management practices required by the state of Vermont as a truck road. So we oppose. Okay. Any other testimony? My name is Addison Kesmerick. I am a consulting forester with Greenleaf Consulting. I am also here representing Montgomery Timber Company. And in addendum to Scott's comments, um, the acceptable management, acceptable water management practices for water, water quality on logging jobs in Vermont, long name, um, acceptable grade for a logging road is about 7%. So it would need to be regraded to about negative 18%. Um, there is a ledge that is just before the corner where it starts to head kind of a strong northwest corner. Um, where there's a grade stake, center line grade stake. Um, so that would need to potentially be blasted in order to allow for that 7% grade. Um, I also asked a question today during a site visit about the turning radius from the proposed trail onto the existent legal trail. And I was given the response that there would be no allowance for an additional turning radius or turning berth on that for logging trucks. Um, but rather they would need to stay within the two rod limitations of the easement, which is just not admissible for a, a logging truck to make that kind of turning radius. Um, those are my additional comments at this time. I also object to the proposed trail. Paul, do you have any questions? You mentioned water quality standards. Okay, move, move your up. He's asking for regulations. Do you have so I don't. I do not have this, this stat, the regulation, in, with me, but they're readily available on the internet. And even even if we were to build that road within the standard, where how are we going to gain uh, eighteen percent reduction of eighteen percent plus or minus slope? With this, within a 60 foot right of way. I mean, yeah, within a 60 foot right of way. And the permitting costs alone, because we'd have to build the abutments, we can't be in the brook, we'd have to build the abutments in the town road. We'd have to get it permitted, and we'd have to build a truck road, a bridge that would cross, cover uh, 99,000 miles. So it's, it, if you were to look at the site, Mr. Gillis, Attorney Gillis, you would find that it's not, there's no way you could build a road in the proposed site. If a proposed... Yeah, I, I am familiar with the site. Um, this is a, a laying out of a trail, not a class four road or a class three road. I hope so, that's clear. What's the purpose of the trail? To provide access to the land. So we already have access, why can't I walk across the current access? So I could park on the property without blocking the access to the trail and I could walk through the Blodgett's yard, across their septic system, across the corner of their house, any time of the day or night, and walk up to that property, onto the, across the brook, and I, nobody can stop me, is that correct? Okay, so if I could park anywhere, what I'm saying is somebody drops me off and I want to it's a trail. You can go across walk across that trail anytime, day or night, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, I cannot be stopped. Well, that's the purpose of the trail. Okay, and there's no additional purpose of a trail. 
except by de by granted by the select board? And so, can the select board grant access across a legal trail for uses other than walking? They could, uh, but not at this hearing. Okay, but they could. Thank you. Any other, Ms. Did you have additional questions? Um, Michael Brown with F and W Forestry. Why don't you go ahead and move up, Michael? In case you have Okay, I can move up. Uh, so Michael Brown with F and W Forestry, representing Timber Res Partners 2 ADK. Uh, I was always under the assumption that whether it be a Class 3, 4, or a legal trail, it's all a legal public right of way, and uh, you are legally permissible to do anything that's legal or permissible in the state of Vermont or in that town, in that right of way. And that includes improving it with select board and usually town road foreman approval for logging access or permanent access. Uh, is that correct? Or We have a process in town if you want to work in the town right away, there is a permit process. Right, that's correct. So, so if that's a legal trail, which is a public right of way, uh, kind of like Scott was saying, I mean, right, that truck road's there, so if it was granted by the town to put a truck bridge back in that spot, you could use it to put trucks across again, correct? That's correct. Okay, and so it's a, it's a public right of way, so anybody in the world right now can walk right on that public right of way and do whatever they want because it's a public right As a town trail, you can walk on that, the That's trail. correct. That is correct. And approve, excuse me, I'm talking out of order. No, I was, and if the select board approves, we can improve upon the trail. Right, you, again, any town accidents, whether it's a trail, uh, a road, you can, we have permits, you can send in a permit to the town and the road foreman looks at it and if it's something that we want to do, we can, but again, it's up to the, up to the board. Guy? That, that was a town highway downgraded to a legal trail. When it got downgraded to a legal trail, it became everybody's property owner legal right away. It's, it's everybody's property owner that owned property up there. It became their legal right away. It might be a legal trail to everybody else, but it's their right away. So it's not just for walking. It might be walking for everybody else in town, but the people that own it up there, that's their legal right away to their land because it was a town highway. It's, it's always, it's, it's a town trail now, and whatever the town trail is. And if you look up the state statutes, which I have copies of, when it was a town highway and gets downgraded, it becomes there right away. That's correct. That's correct. That, that is correct. Uh, Count? That, I've been here longer than any of the people there. Where the town thought the trail was, the uh, gentleman over there, the, work for the logging company, they couldn't make that turn then. When they thought, you know, when they asked me, Cal, can we cut trees on your property, have the excavator come out and dig it way up, we'll put it all back, there was no problem. I said, sure, no problem. And they did, they done an excellent job, because they couldn't make the turn there then. Now, I mean, it went on and the town determined that the trail was never there. You guys had it surveyed, and Mr. Townsend determined the trail was never there. It, it hasn't been totally um, where it was, but where they're saying it is now, right through my yard, said I built a garage wrong. I was told where I had to build that garage. Where I parked my cars, the original house was there. Now I have somebody that, I have hopefully he's still alive. He's 90 some odd years old. He lived on that road. Said there was never a bridge there, period. Because that was all farmland, it was all fields. And it was never, you know, never a bridge there. There was a blacksmith shop there. Because I had to build a garage in the exact same spot, town told me, that the pre existing one. Couldn't, now I did get permission to move the house. 
But the system, I didn't put the system in. That was grandfather was already there. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a permit issue. That's why when you went to mediation, you know, it was determined since you own land up the road. And being a trail, town's not responsible for putting in a bridge or anything. Right. And it's been, as far as I can remember, a uh, trail. There was, there was a bridge there, but not suitable for big equipment, you know. But the, the farmers all up through there, Larry Sumner was the one that said, because his dad had his farm there, said, they, yeah, you know, they put bridges in wherever they wanted to get across to their land to cut the hay and stuff. Cal, how long um, the access where you, you let the, the loggers kind of circle around? He let the loggers. It was uh, my way. Excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. We, ne we never owned that land. We had no right to let him go through there. Ever. We didn't. Our, these, our name was never on that property. Yeah, down where Travis is, my, my name was never on so that property. So I don't property. know why you're involving no. us because we only owned on the other side. I own on the other side. We never <laughs> owned that property. Would you let me finish the question? Okay, sure. Thanks. Well, I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. How long had access, how long had people been using that through there? I don't know. I don't know. I would say at least 30 years. Maybe, okay, I just, just a question. I was, you, you, you brought it up. So yeah, I, 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 I just want to answer. Sir, in the I, back here. Yeah, hi, uh, Vince Rooney. I own the land abutting the forestry land, uh, which is affected by this access road. I just have a general question for the town. So, hey, can you, what, was it Vince you said? Vince. Hey, can you mind moving up so? Yeah, sure. Um, take a seat. Take a rolling seat. So I just have a general question, um, and it's sort of relevant, but this discussion over this town road and access to it, it affects property that's now owned above Coxbrook Road, which has now become landlocked because of access rights. Now, if the town is going, like my house is located up on Congdon Road. At one point it was a, a class three road, it was thrown up to be a class four road. So I maintain that road. The front part of that road is owned by the Case family, the Case family trust now. Yeah. Okay, so we have a joint agreement, I know Lou Case, and I basically maintain the whole road and I take care of it. I put my own gravel on it and because I need access to get to my house. What is the general requirement, and this is probably a legal question, if the town has sold a piece of property located up on the mountain above, which has to have permissible rights to have access to, what's the minimum class road that needs to be provided to have access to that? Because there's a lot of property sitting up there owned by several people, and now it's landlocked. And it's been this situation for eight years. Now, I'm not looking to piss anybody off, but I just want clarity on this because I think everybody deserves you know, an opinion. I can get to this road by walking through the woods and walking all the way around my property, which I shouldn't have to do, but it's not you know, inaccessible to me. I just have to go charging through the forest to get to it. I've seen people walking through the river, the little creek there on the side to get up on it because they don't want to get anybody upset, and that's how they climb up onto the road. So the question as a select board, when you sell a piece of property that's located several hundred yards from the road. The step board doesn't sell any property. If you, whatever, you lease a piece of property, someone buys a piece of land up there. There are several people in this room that own property up there. There are buildings up there, okay? How do people gain access to that? What is the minimum class road that is required for access to that? Well, there's a trail. That's the minimum right there. And, and that What's is the definition that is. of a trail? Is that a foot trail? Because a yeah. trail can mean no. a lot of different things. A trail is no. it's two rods wide. What's the, okay. what's the width of two rods wide? That's roughly 30, 33 30 feet. feet. Okay, so that's a road. It's like 16 feet five. And that means it's, and by your definition of a trail, meaning that it's not maintained. No. Correct. Correct. So, oh. Oh. what? You have, down by Larry Sumner and down that way, you had a different class, like he's talking about. It's up to, and I think Ray will tell too, or he knows, you can have built houses there. You've got to bring it up at your own expense, put the culverts in the way the town wants them, make the road width, 
Because you do want both. I don't think that's his question. No, he wanted to know. He wanted to know. I'm going to clarify something on Rini's behalf. That is Legal Trail 21. That is not Condon Road. That is Legal Trail 21. Yeah. No one's saying it's Condon Road. Right. Well, you just said it was. No, but he asked. He was talking about something different. Tom, your area. Yeah, Tom, he asked how you know somebody builds a house up there, how does they. Right. The town will take, because they did on. Take so many. Up above some, Larry, some branches off. I uh, forget the Yes, if, if someone builds a house, they got to bring a trail. Right. Okay, so I'm a, all right, let's just say I'm an outsider. I come in and I approach a town. And there's a piece of land that's available that someone wants to sell me. Okay, I ask to purchase it. I get the permits. I purchase this piece of land. There has to be access to that land. A, if, there is, if I want to put a house up there, I have to run utilities up there sure. if, if it's not a cab. Right. If I choose, and I need, if I want to drive to it, if it's permissible at my cost, I would have to put infrastructure in to That's meet that requirement. What is the town's minimum requirement to have access to that? Is it two rods wide? Just by name, really only that this is a trail and there is legal access to it. Okay. If it needed a bridge, you'd have to put it in. On but see, now you understand the conundrum here. It's because what we're talking about here now is that you have landlocked property because of this situation. And it's going to go across a waterway, which is going to create an environmental issue. It's always going across the water. I understand, but it's going, it's, it's an environmental issue now, especially after Irene, because the Environmental Protection Agency in Vermont is gonna create all kinds with Act 250, issues with any kind of building codes to get anything going across there. Mm -hmm. So what is the best solution that someone who has an investment of logging up there, which I could potentially have at some point, to obtain the resources up there cost effectively enough without me having to, having to have to put more money than what I would log to get to it? I mean, we know well, what the-, the town the town is not going to provide you the resources. It's not about the town providing it. The, there has to be an access road. There has to no, be a means to get no, to no, But there does not. It's the, up to the person who purchased the property should have known beforehand but the, what the access was. But it's been that, but that, okay, I got that. That's understandable. That's a completely valid argument to this day. Prior to this day, in the past, that was logged land, correct? What was done historically to remove timber from there? Clear Lake for, how many years did Clear Lake for on that property? And how many years did Claire Lafer log that property? And how did Claire Lafer remove so it? So I think, I don't know, it's before my time. So I have Scott, my property. Scott was just talking earlier, and he said, I think in 07, they came in and they put a bridge across and they had right that that's that's this right. company doing that right right that's, i'm talking about clear lake like i'm here 22 23 years we've had the property sainsbury owned it before we did okay clear lake for had the property up there so i guess what i'm asking is is that grandfather prior they had access to that and now there is no access to what was in the past that's because unfortunately where they had the access was not the legal trail. So okay, somebody, so, it, that, so this is this is what I'm trying to get to. So what was happening in the past shouldn't have been happening. That's correct, absolutely. Okay. And so what I, I think the, um, the understanding then is that the, the, going forward, it's the change because we, what they were doing in the past was not supposed to be done, even though it was done for how many years. I think so they said in the, in, sometimes in the 70s, people said they were using that, that access across there. I, you know, we had... Right, but this talent was in there at 90, I mean, your family's in there. Yes, yes. right where his house is in there. So, so it's he's, been, been there, he's been there a long time. So it, it has been a long time that that, that that was what was used for access. Right, but and, and he's, then, been, he's been there the whole time, correct? Uh, 
I guess I didn't ask yeah. that. And uh, were you hired when it's over then, over that sentence? Right. Right. Ever since right. we went there, there was arguments about trying there to get you guys there. to please no get them out of my yard. yard. Right. Well, well, so so wait, wait. Select selectors in the past no. have failed to do their job correctly. So, 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 so the select boards in the past have approved Claire Latrip to drive to their property and log it. No, they never, no. They never no. listened to us. They it was Lathrop, when Lathrop went up there and logged, they asked me, can we put a bridge in a temporary But who thing? provided permits These that? people did. Who provided the permits to Claire Latrip to log? Because it, it doesn't get logged overnight. It gets logged over a series of weeks or months or whatever it takes. Logger's rules are different. He can, he can get access to the But you understand the point I'm trying to make. Right. It, was, it was used for umpteen years for access. But who was used? Was the property used or was he also used? And did the town, not you guys, because this was obviously a different right. select the, board. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that you're trying to resolve a situation to the benefit of them so that they no longer have to be, but it's also. Oh, shit. Travis, that's you're out of You really, you can't. Okay. Thank you. Alright. Is there a happy medium? Because you can't turn around and tell people who have had access to it or who own property up there, you no longer have access to it because the past 150, 200 years we've done this and now you just can't do it anymore. Because no, basically, so, so, so because so let me, Vince, let me, let me address let me let me address where you and then we can we can go on. So Again, when I got on the board, it was in 011, and I think at that point is when it, it came to us. Mr. Martin, and last name's the same, we have no relation, we never knew each other since, um, came to the board and couldn't get across the access. To his camp, yeah, I understand. Right. I know was, the They were still plowed up. So that's when we looked into it. We were trying to figure out what's the problem. I was new to the board, uh, Ray wasn't on, uh, Callie wasn't, Jason, I don't think John had been on. We were just trying to figure out what is What's legal, what, what is the best way. Right. We want access for everyone, we want the bloggers to be happy. We're right. trying to figure out what works here. So what we had, uh, we had a survey done by uh, Townsend. Yeah. Townsend, American Engineers, whatever it is. That's when he located that trail that goes through the corner of this, this garage, and over the and septic, over tank. The septic tank, correct. Right. And that, we had uh, site- Which is different than where they were using it. Which was right. different than where they were being used, and in, in logits prior to that had been saying that wasn't the legal area, but it had been going on for years and years. Just that's the way it had been. No one knows how it got there, why it got there, but that's where everyone was crossing. Um, just the way it happened to be. Right. And everyone at that point accepted it. It wasn't a problem. People got along. That's what things happen in life. I don't know what happens. Yeah. People don't get along. Things, whatever. So that, then there's, uh, for lack of a better word, feuding or something that wasn't going to work. We we realized that. Going through Mr. Blodgett's uh, septic through his garage, it's not going to work either. Yeah. It just is not going to work. So that's where we uh, looked through. We did walks along that road, just trying to figure out. What is the best access point for you, for Timber, for everyone? We're looking for a win-win situation. We had, I don't know how many, and it's documented in all this paperwork here, uh, site visits. And we had Mr. Martin, you know, verbally, do you accept this? Is this good? Everyone that we could get there that had a dog in the fight, we, we certified letters, and I know every person who has a deed touching this property has got a certified letter, so don't say you don't, because I got them, I got copies of them. That includes everybody in this building tonight. Um, so everyone was well aware of this. And it was, and so what we were trying to do is to gain the access to you guys, provide a trail. Now, a trail is not uh, a class three road, a class four road. A trail is a trail and if someone in so when they have the definition of the trail with them. Right, just some clarity, we're, when we're talking about a trail here, we're talking about basically two pins in the woods, okay? There is no trail or road. It's right, and, and that's... The, you're that's, walking up the steep incline, you're walking across the water, there is no... So that's where that's where the disconnect is because uh, legally defined, a trail does not have to be uh, a well-cut-out tool rod. I have to say. 
that's a trail needs to be providing. This is legal access point A to point B. And that's what we are trying to do. I understand that. But you have to also understand from a business perspective, someone else on this side of the fence, not me particularly, but I'm just saying, someone who has invested interests in the property above that, that are not going to sit well with that. For the simple reason that you have landlocked their property with the current trail that you are recommending. No. How is it? Wait, no. Just tell us no. no. Because it's just, you can't access it without putting in a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of permitting process to bring in heavy equipment. It's just common sense. Anybody but, 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 but that is uh, no different than it was before. No, that's not necessarily 100% true, but I'm not saying that that's where it should go. Please understand, I'm not saying it should go over his septic tank and right. through his garage. All I'm trying to say is that the solution is probably not the best solution as recommended. And I understand this wants to be put to bed, because a lot of money has been spent on it, my tax dollars, hard at work, and many, many years of the select board dealing with this, and a lot of aggravation for this family, who are my neighbors, and a lot of aggravation for a lot of the people who are involved in this. But the solution that you are providing is not going to be a solution, because it just, the practicality is not legit for somebody who wants logging out there. Any logger is gonna look at that. All right, so what, what would your solution be? I don't have a solution because honestly, I just found out about this in a recent letter that I received two weeks ago. I know it's been going on for eight years, but I've been getting letters and tidbits because this has been court battles. There's no reason for me to get involved in the court battles on it. I don't want to make enemies with my neighbor. I want to be good neighbors with everybody that's in this room, okay? My interests are not in creating problems. My interests are not in my best interest to create problems with this select board. I'm trying to be practical. Like I said, I've been here 20 something years. I like living in Moortown and I want Moortown to succeed as a town. I do business in Northfield and I think minds need to get together and just look at things rash I'm sorry, rationally because I think you guys are kind of jumping through conclusions and because this has been going on so long just to try to put it away. And I don't think you're going to get we we spent a lot of time on this. I know. So I'm, I've, I'm been, really I've been here since the time we started. Everyone involved. I understand. With, I am. Uh, I've been so watching this whole like, thing from the start. You know, <laughs> so, uh, Scott, I've said my piece. Else? Yeah. Thank you, Vince. Go ahead. So I got three questions. I'll start with the simplest one first. All right. Um, we found out about this about the end of April of this year. How long has the town actually been discussing this with the Blodges? Oh, it's, it's been a while. I know we, we sent you a letter. Just approximately. Right, when you say this, you mean what letter? 2010. This right. 2010. Right. Because you guys keep saying, we've been at this a long time. So, mm -hmm. what is a long time since April 27th when we first got notified? No. And we sent you this. Certified. Yeah, but. Certified mailing on 8-17-16. And some, I don't know whose signature that is from Montgomery Chamber. But. Okay. So, uh, 7th, so six, July of 16? Uh, August it? of 16, and this was. Can you hear me, Paul? Yes. Um, this was sent to everyone on the service list. Mm -hmm. Sent was a copy of the proposed new access. Which is the same same access? Yeah, mm -hmm. same access yeah. here. Mm -hmm. July of 16? Of 16, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to say this is a copy of mm -hmm. the proposed survey. Okay. Um, we sent this to Timberbest as well, yeah. or Fountain yeah. Forestry, Andy Carlo, or whoever. Okay. So, so that was the 16. Okay. Thank you. That was the first hearing. So, thank you. Yeah. And it's probably so, been, uh, I don't know. Three or four public site gates as well. Okay. I just saw if you clarify. Yeah, no, I mean. So, Mayor Benson Rooney? Yes. Same thing for you. I don't remember saying that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 So, this is a hypothetical question. But for a septic system in house being within a town trail, would you grant me temporary access to? Put log tr to crop to get onto our woodlot, but for the septic in the house, would you grant me a temporary mm -hmm. access through the trail? There's a process for that. I would have to look at everything, review everything. Okay. Yeah. 
but it is possible. I would say anything is possible. But okay. I'm, probability of it, I don't know. Okay. You, you of course, know the process. I just want to, yeah. and then with all due respect, I have one last question if that's okay. Has the town of Moortown been compensated for the Blodgett's taking of a land that is a town owned property? We're not a town owned. <laughs> guys, we don't need that comment. Hey, guys, really, we haven't uh, compensated, but we haven't had anything taken from us, so. Okay, so I can go up there. I can go up there. Well, they are using the land to their benefit. Is that a taking? That seems wrong. I didn't hear what you said. I said to the no, I'm just saying. Right. I mean, I, I, let's. What I'm saying is. That's a longer cut there. Yeah. No, it's not. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to clarify. That's what, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. No. Travis, really? Cal? I just don't know. No, so, no, he's just trying to hear what Cal, I'm just trying to clarify some things. No, I'm not. Not. not I say with all due respect. <laughs> no, it's, I uh, I'm just asking if you made any compensation to the town by putting your septic system in a corner. I just, I let me, can I answer that to you, Tom? Yeah, sure. The the right sure. I did not put that system in. It was grandfather. The house that was there was over 100 years old. The garage that was there was over 100 years old. I did not, I had to build that garage to the exact same footprint. You guys have the uh, mm -hmm. paperwork from that um, from Florence Turner the house they gave me permission to move the house where it was otherwise nothing could go through there anyways the cellar hole is still there the septic system was put in by somebody for the people that owned it before my dad bought that house so I mean I didn't do it and I didn't take nothing from the town matter of fact when you get when you when you get a mortgage your um, insurance for when you get a deed only goes back 40 years. This is one of the only states that it only goes back 40 years. So when they've done title searches to find out if there was anything ever there, 40 years, you don't find out nothing. Even if you went back 80 years, you wouldn't have found out the town had a road there, if it did. Because I know, like I said, I know somebody that was born on a washbowl road Dell's Washbowl Road that's 90 some odd years old. He said no. Alright. Travis, did you have, I just have a brief comment? I consider this a deliberate torque to my family. From this town this to this select board. It's been malicious to my family for the past 18 years that I can remember. It's been malicious to me. It's been negligent of this select board to file the correct paperwork that they've already signed according to VSA Title 19, 305, Section 305, subsection. This is a deliberate tort to my family, and in 2010, I told you, Tom, to don't ever come on my land again, and he walks into my house, unannounced, walks right into it. All you right, Travis, you're out of line. Just speaking my piece, just speaking my piece. Just forget it. Tom. Again, this today's meeting just, because we've already had this site visit already. We've already no, done no, this no, site no. visit today. It's already been done. Yeah. So, all right. Paul, do you have any questions, questions Paul? Uh, no, I do not. Any other testimony to this um, relocation? Tom, can I? Just we walked, as you know, as you said, and I appreciate you saying that. We walked that five or six times. Uh, some people that wanted to be here can't be here because their kid is pretty sick, I guess, and he's in Boston. They wanted to be here because they thought the two with, with you and I and everybody. That, uh, during the first court hearing, the judge ordered mediation. And the mediator that they appointed stated that there's no way that it, you can take his house. So they... Paul, we know that. Paul wrote the terms with, uh, who the heck was it? It wasn't you. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. 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 They wrote the terms. They went upstairs and they wrote the terms and they came back down and handled it. Right. I agreed to it. We agreed to everything. And then it went on and went on and went on and went on. Oh, I'd just like to say you've done a fair 
as you showed said, a fair history here tonight of as you said with, uh, between okay. the town and West As you said with trails, it's it's just a way, you know, to ride a horse, maybe bike or walk. It doesn't have to be upgraded by the town into a road. If they want to put it into a road, they have the right. I can't stop. Thank you, Cal. We uh, we we, go. we appreciate I'm sorry. it. I know you got That's all right. So uh, at this point, I'm going to close the hearing on the Trail 17 access relocation. I thank everyone for your participation. Uh, there's a statute. I believe we have what's it? 60 days, Paul. 60 days, and we will get out uh, uh, our decision. Thank you. What was the paperwork that was already signed? I don't know what he's talking about. I got it right here. This is already signed, given to everything, given to the bank and everything. All right. You know, that's what I was saying. Right. This was done way back in. I know. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I know you got another. Yep. You guys want to get home tonight, too. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Again, within 60 days, there will be a written decision. Yes. Thank you. Well, I mean, in the public comment period, we're going to take up your signage. I make a motion to close the hearing. I'll second it. All in favor, aye. 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 Huh, which is the next piece? You can bring up your sign. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was I didn't know. Yeah. All right. So we are going to go ahead and move on to uh, public comments. Um, not of trail 17. Uh, however, I guess some of it's not really needed to say. Go ahead. Um, so why don't we? Anyone for general public comments? Excuse me, just a second. Uh, you want to give Paul some oh, questions? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Paul. Any public comment, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, Paul. All right, so now we'll move on to public comments. Cal, Jason brought up something when we were walking. Um, you wanted you, uh, a sign for driveway or something like right, that? Right, it's on here. Yeah, it's on here. Section 3. Section 3. The sign is stipulated. This one's all, this all signs, on. Uh, on. Oh, on. Two, three. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. On. That's right. On. See, and everything that's where I did it was signs. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. It's, it's When you go around the corner, when he's, oh, when he's trying to get out of uh, the driveway or getting in the driveway, oh, yeah, I'm there's sorry. Been a that's lot a, of um, traffic going by really fast. Yeah, because I had to back in here with my trim. Yes. Know? And I put on my four wheels way up the road. The car is still there. I don't mind cars going fast. The speed limit on that road used to be 50 before. So and what? But driveway on the corner, was that what it was? I mean, no, my driveway. I, I understand. Blind driveway. Blind driveway. Yeah, yeah, blind driveway. Yeah, because the state will supply it to the town. Because the other day I'm backing in. No cars are behind me. They've been coming down around that corner. I'm, I'm a pretty good judge of speed because I used to race. At 50, 55 miles an hour on the wrong side of the road. There's right. no need to yes, so, you do something. I don't know the policy. Cheryl, is that a statement? Do they have um, yeah. signs that or is that something like that? We'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, both, both sides. And I'm going to start taking numbers. Like I said, I don't mind if somebody wants to drive a ship. When you're walking and stuff, go slow by them. I, I do it all the time. You know, it's just that somebody. I'm going. To, I almost got hit the other day. That car he never couldn't even slow down. And he whips it around and quick. I don't know how he made it, but he made it. And my four ways are on, and I'm backing into my yard. Because right. tractor trail is turning around the other. Get on. I know you better. Get on. I'm sorry, but that's just the way we got to go. Sorry, yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> All right, I know um, we have the library and the historical society coming in, but... They canceled. Oh, they did. Good. They canceled? Yes. Oh, and Jamie Wimble stopped. Wait. Oh, man, you got kids. Jamie Wimble stopped around 5.30 and said that you're not ready to come in, so take they a They may not be, but I think they're <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no! 
<laughs> I thought the last hour was tough. Huh? <laughs> so the library is not coming in. The library is out. Yeah. Well, I'll stay here and see if they need to go about that. Not for long. Okay. Well, nice to see you out in the city. I haven't seen you. I've been laid up. I'm just getting sorry. Right now. So I, I got your text, and I'm sorry, I actually sent something back that didn't go. So I want you guys to come forward. I think it's safe to? Uh, I think so. All right, so it's more comfortable back here. If not, I'm going to borrow my cane. <laughs> Watch my cat. <laughs> All the way up. Come on. No, no, no. no. <laughs> like our friends, come on. No, no, no. You guys. <laughs> so we're just here to say we're going to have a party tomorrow night. We're hoping that party's out from this that you guys are showing up at our party. And can you tell everyone why? It's a hearing uh, on the proposed subdivision regulations that we would hope to have voted in November. There's some discussion about whether November is the proper time to do this, but we think it's probably as good as any. We'd like to have this as a um, discussion, not just amongst the plan commission and whoever shows up, if anyone shows up. We also have you guys involved because the next step after whatever we do tomorrow night is to then pass this on to you and then you have to hold a hearing. And then after you decide what to do after your hearing, you then may or may not warn them for the vote. So uh, I guess the first question is, how is it coming? Well, we so <laughs> last year there was a bit of a debacle with respect to timing and versions mm -hmm. and everything, and we've been very was, careful. Because to, drafts were not dated, so everybody was looking at so, a different version. Yeah, so we have dated drafts now. We've gone over the subdivision regs pretty carefully. We're, um, we're looking at just the subdivision regulations now, not some other proposals that have been floated earlier. We want, we think these are the most important things to. Right. Um, we can also yeah, add a um, uh, certificate of occupancy. Certificate of occupancy. We're looking at what's the other one? Oh, the, um, all this stuff. That yeah. Salvage yards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That was the other, the other proposal that was floating. So, so, but all we wanted, what we want to take up this at this point are the subdivision regulations. And you said you're getting pushed back a little bit too. Well, I've been to a certain other town official told me that some people think it's wrong to do these town things <clears throat> on election day in November because that's not a town day. That's a, State national mode or something. My take on it is who cares? They get, the most, get people to come to the vote. I was going to say, don't we typically get a larger turnout? Yeah, during that, that time? I think that we'd be interested in the larger. I mean, for my part, the more people who vote on things, the better off you are. It would be so, nice if the, if the electorate was informed. What bothers me about a lot of this stuff is that people don't know about any of this, so they look at the ballot and they go, oh, you don't need it. Oh, the problem is no one reads stuff. So you were here earlier, and these people that were testifying got certified letters, okay? For the last how many years? And show has a stack on there. This, thing, this is the first time we've heard about this. This is what we had some, or April 17th or something. Um, people don't pay attention. They don't. You know, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, if you can send someone a certified letter that's stating this such and such is changing and they ignore it, what are we going to do to get people to... You're right. I mean, you can drag them to water, but you can't make them listen. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> I am. So I think, and I agree with you guys, I like the idea of the November election because typically you get more people out. But can you get them more informed so they're just not going in checking a box? So if there's an urgency to this, that's the urgency is to make, because there's the warnings that you have to, you know, so we warned ours. This is over, we pass it to you, you guys need to get on with a warning to have your hearing so that you can then warn for the vote. And according to the Sherilyn, there has to be, I think it's August the 7th, because they print ballots or something. And and we um, we would like to you know really work on getting the word out. I mean I know that people don't pay attention if they're not inclined to 
time to pay right. attention, but but we can do more than um, just host the public hearing. You know, we can put information on the front porch and in the papers, and we like to do that. And mm -hmm. um, so I think know, so. Twitter. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a good idea, and I think we. Um, some night we have a, and I'm going to laugh here, but we have a party at the town hall. And we have either pizza or something, I'm just like, we cook something or whatever. Yeah. Well, not right now. But maybe that, I mean, because food, I, I mean, people Please show up stay. for food. I mean, I go to meetings all the time, and the only reason people come is because I bring a lot of food. Um, often a and so maybe that's what it is is to turn it into something to get people out to hear it to get stuff. I mean you guys can draw a crowd just because of the stuff that goes on here. Plus you got going on so people are looking at it on TV. Yeah. We, we get products like our guests to get you know, on. You know? So um <laughs> We've, we've also provided so what's our, cookies what, in the past, but what, we actually, what was your program. event that you that you just had? Oh, Cinco down? de Mayo. Cinco yeah. de Mayo. We had mm -hmm. we put out surveys that day, and and we we didn't really get wind of it until fairly late, not because of you not putting information <laughs> out, but because of us not reading it. And um, yeah, so, but we we that. did get a fair bit of um, interest at our last minute table down there at Cinco de Mayo. It was pretty. It was good. good. What, what's everyone else doing? I mean, I just didn't go ahead with this, but try to promote it right and just move on. I mean, we waited a year. So what, I'm not sure what you're saying. What are you saying? Yes. I think we should do it in November, but maybe put some different promotional... The problem is we don't have time for parties. We've got, we've got our thing that we want for tomorrow night. Right. Mm -hmm. and we'll hand this to you. You can have a party if you want to. Well, that's it. Well, no, but that's where you're going to help. It would be yeah, after, after, oh. after hours. To promote you want to make it close like to. information. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You don't want to make it like two weeks prior and two months prior to hearing. Yeah. Two weeks. After yeah. the hearing, you warned mm -hmm. for the vote. Now it's like, here's why we want you to vote. Right. Yeah. So I was also involved when Jonathan came in. And I said, what? You want to vote? Don't you remember this delinquent tax collector thing? where the room was full of people saying, you know, why didn't you have the vote now instead of a town meeting? Nobody pays attention no to goes stuff. To town so, meeting so, so that was kind of like me that said, If yeah, we got rid of Australian <laughs> ballot, we could have a real town meeting. Same thing you said. I hear that? We were. <laughs> Gazillion times. I, and I, and I see your point. on the phone here? <laughs> <laughs> and I see is Cheryl's point. And then the idea, but you know, I don't know. I think we should just go for it. I mean, the, the people who are most uh, are most affected by the subdivisions have they been participating at all? Well, there haven't been a lot of sizable subdivisions in in mm -hmm. the. Um, but there's like a thousand acres all of a sudden for sale. Three thousand. Three thousand acres. Oh, more time. Yeah. The 776 piece, there's 108 oh, right. acres on the other side of the road, plus where's the rest of it? It's on, well, it goes all the way to the actually on the map from the land. So, so, so basically, so, that's right. what's for sale. From the from the Are, do the sellers have any interest in this to maintain the value of the road? Well, we, don't, we haven't actually spoken to the sellers. I talked to the guy, one of the guy about this, and he just, he, all he was, like a listing agent. He works for Fountains. He just basically said, I said, I, I was asking about the 108 acre piece because it abuts my property. And I just said, what's the story? And he goes, well, I'll look on the website and if you got questions, call me about it. He says, we're just looking to unload this thing. So, I mean, they're not going to be subdividing. They're just looking to sell. So this doesn't affect them. It affects the, the next buyer. Party. Oh, it'll affect the yeah. person that mm -hmm. chooses to buy it unless they want to turn it into like just a huge estate, which in the case of 108 acres, maybe. In the case of 776 acres, not likely. Not for a million three, unless another beer baron decides to move to town. Um, the other part of it is this is all covered by Act 250 if they want to get into like a 25 lot subdivision or whatever. So, I mean, it's not like we're right. hanging out. You know, no. Right. 
treasures down here. But at the same time, we should just get something in place. And it's a good conversation to have. People should be thinking about this. More towns change. You know, for a long time, it changed a little bit. There was a house we got in here and there. And like the last 20 years, it's amazing how much has gone on here. And this whole central town area has really been. You know, it's going to continue, I think. Right. I mean, it's, you saw it, of course, when we were in college, it was uh, Richmond, for Richmond, Richmond, yeah, Richmond. But, you know, and now it's it's kind of here, so uh, with those bedroom communities and... So, we would like this to be a more than just us on the Planning Commission, because we're really sick of us. So we would like other people to come in so we can have a conversation with other people. So tomorrow night, um, is anyone available? I am flying out in the morning, so I'm... Cyanide. I went to the last one with Carl. <laughs> or oh, Carl was Carl, Carl you and John Riley. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was a big turnout for us. <laughs> <laughs> but Carl shows up just, you know, he gets wind of this. And yeah. What what time is it? Six thirty. This is six thirty. Right here. Here at the town hall. Right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah. We weren't so full of ourselves that we thought we were gonna leave the town hall. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, we're going to go over it, and I think there's a broad discussion, you know, we can just pass this along tomorrow night as warned, and then you guys, from what you hear tomorrow night, can make your changes before you warn your hearing, um, which would be a way to go, if this thing doesn't evolve, it just gets Right, passed. so it would be good if the three of us... It's hard for me to... Mm -hmm. John. But at least you know about it, and you know that we're right. interested yeah. in working with you on getting the word out before so the what? election. All right, so you'll get it tomorrow night. Whatever you hear, the idea, pass it to us. Hopefully, John will be there. We can talk, um, and then we can have a hearing. And so, I mean, I'm not quite clear on this. So, we can um, approve it with minor changes. And or can we improve it with? You'll have your hearing tomorrow night. Right, and then we can handle one with some the comp significant changes. But if there's things that we think should happen, but we don't want to slow the process, we can approve it as one, and then hand it with comments saying you guys might want to change this or that, or want to think about. It. If they're insignificant changes, yeah. if they're significant, then the whole thing has to go start over. But we've um, but we've been through this once actually, for better or worse, so I don't really think there'll be significant well, changes. Significant people no, Although, how many people showed up the first time? They weren't all there for us, were they? I think we was on a guy from yeah, Bridge, yeah. Or, or yeah. Bridge, guy from AOT was yep. in, so, mm -hmm. and not that they didn't slide a lot, but didn't he tell us it was 2019? He did, originally, yeah. Yeah, and now it's 2020. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yes. The bridge in Middlebury that they finally did on their own was first proposed in 1955. <laughs> Darren, don't tell us that. <laughs> well, the good news is they are starting in 2019, but it's around the cemetery there. Yeah. Building up the, 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 the bridge itself will be 2020. Of course, that's the schedule before they had a fire in the building. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All oh, the plans yeah. are done. <laughs> all right, so, so we're not going to take up your all your time. No, that's all right. Are right. Items on your agenda. So this is the correct uh, amendment on the website now. Yes. yes. And the date is five fifteen, May fifteen. I think it's right at the top. Okay. Yes. Right hand side. Yeah, so, you know, I, to, I think that was the issue before, right? We had, we had three different copies. Yeah. 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 So, all sorts well, of we, not, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus. The guy who was doing all that wasn't dating, and we pressed that every change one word dated. Dated, absolutely. So, we're all going to be on the same page, and hopefully, it's good. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you for coming. Nice to come on. Nice to see you. Mm -hmm. Hey ladies. Yeah, why not? Roll on.
So we had uh, the library commissioners have postponed, but we're happy to see you, ladies. Oh, yeah. 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 I know who you are, but you already need something. I'm going to hold this because it's gold. They don't? Yeah. 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 Ye
I think the board we recognize that we need to be painted. Oh, that's and, and, and in the contract, it stated what was supposed to be done, whether it's been followed or not. We, yeah. But that's. I never saw. It. So, anyways, I mean, we, we wanted to see that building <laughs> utilized to its uh, full potential. Um, and in the last year or so, we've done a really a, a poor job of trying to promote it. I mean, we've talked about it at different times. Um, it just, for whatever reason, does not doesn't get used. Um, so we thought that perhaps if the library is there, it's more of a more of a community center than a library. Uh, yes, library use, but libraries nowadays are more than just books and more. You know, it, you know, there's more things that go on. And we're looking at more of a, a, a utilizing that as a, a town center, as it was I envisioned. You have the downstairs, you have a great kitchen. Um, you know, that's where maybe a senior can meet and things like that. It's to really utilize that building. It's not to make it uh, exclusive of everyone and just a library. It's more to be inclusive to everyone to use the building, but to get some use out of it. And by putting something like that in there that's using it all the time, they have a lot of good programs. I mean, I, I'm very impressed. I don't know if you go to the library much or use any of their programs they do, but they're doing a lot. And we just, personally, I think it's a good facility here. But again, we're open to, you know, it's really, we're in the phase of, what's everyone think? And if everyone tells that this is an oral idea, probably nothing we would do. Um, well, it came up in one of our meetings that, um, you know, have, has it tried, have you tried to promote the, and, and put feelers out that, you know, letting people know that this is available and, yeah, I think we've done a poor job of it. We put it on front page form a little bit, front, front porch form. Um, <laughs> I front page. I do it every darn time. And then John whispers to the right to click one. I hope it's not a bad thing that I'm saying. It's not back page. I don't know. Um, it's, and, but Katrina did recently come up with a possible new uh, piece for that. So that we've. Yeah, but poorly. We have not done a good job of that. Okay. And, well, I'm concerned that once the library goes in there, I mean, they, they have told us that they have, would have um, racks on wheels that they could move up against the wall if there was going to be an event at the... Um, but I, I wonder how long that will go on. And, I, and who cleans it up, and, um, you know, and takes make yeah, sure that, that it's restored to a, a library again after somebody uses it. You know, this could be very uh, become a problem. Uh, while if it's just there like it is now, people go in, you know that they're responsible for taking their sure. mess out. But when you're returning a, a room, especially a library, to the way it was before, it's difficult. I know. Um, when uh, I was rehearsing with the Mad River Corral, we went into some other places when, when Harwood was closed. And we took a picture of it, and then we made sure that everybody's stands were in the same place and everything was set up exactly the way it was. And that took another 20 minutes at, at the end or so to get it that way. How many people are going to do that and take care of it that way? I doubt if anybody. Is. Yeah, I, those, those are good questions, and those are the type of questions that, um, and we're, we're recording those, that we will be talking to the library. That, that was a good discussion point. So what type of um, racks are there available? You know, are there ones that are permanent on the walls that close up? There's, there's a lot of different storage systems that are available. And, and quite frankly, how many do we need now? Because um, most of the books come from the, the State Library, anyways, and their loans. So, I, I, she, they've talked about they don't need the capacity. It's not like you need huge libraries anymore because it's in and out, and a lot of stuff is electronic. Well, I like it. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the things for books. All I could picture was the type of mm -hmm. vault pad. Well, I know where they are today, and if they had those in that port. Town clerks, town clerks, town hall. 
they're going to have a mess because they're heavy. Mm -hmm. Even if they roll, they're big, and I don't, I can't picture them stored there anywhere. If they're going to be the size that was in the vault here. Have you ever seen um, when schools do book fairs? No, I've never been. So they have like little, they have portable things that literally they look like metal boxes when they go in the truck. And yeah. when you put them in, yeah. uh, they fold all open and they can expand. I think it's more something simpler like that. They but they'd think be of. doing it for a whole library, oh, not yes. just a book fair. Yes. And it would be right. a lot more complicated mm -hmm. and a lot heavier and mm -hmm. a lot more work. You know? I personally would hate to see the town hall closed up and become a, just a library that cannot be used mm -hmm. for other things. And that's what I'm afraid is going to happen for I think that's something that we're very clear about when we were talking about the scope of this project, is this was only an interesting idea to go investigate, and we wanted to retain the town hall as a multiple-use facility. Yeah. And that was a requirement to doing this. And now we're waiting to see if they come up with a clever way to do that or not. So if there is a way to meet all the needs that we want, well, that we want for the use of that as a town hall, community center, library, great. And if not, if there isn't a good solution to that, then that's as far as it goes. This is right now at the point of investigation. Because we don't have a place to go anymore either. So your questions, well, let's go ahead and your questions because yeah. you've got great questions and those are the questions that we need to continue yeah. off. Some, some, some of the ones that are coming up are always bouncing off of the Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Yeah, there's just some questions, some comments that we came up with at our last meeting. Sure. Um, and um, one of them, the first one was, uh, would it go to a public? Of the people. Yeah, we got that. Yes. Okay. And um, the library building is on the state of Vermont's historic buildings register. So I don't know if they were, the trustees were saying that they wanted to sell that when they found out who owned it. I don't know if they. Found they they, they said it. they owned it. They, 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 right. they do more. They do trust Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I knew they were investigating that at the time that we met. And I don't know how that would go if they sold that. And I don't know what, who would want that building. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's exactly. nothing that goes right. with it. There's no land, That's there's right. no land. water, yeah. there's no nothing. Right. Yeah. We want it for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> for a dollar. Because we only eat once a month. We don't worry about the heat, we don't worry about the lights, we don't need a bathroom. I can go to Roger Strauss's department. <laughs> <laughs> across the street from my house. <laughs> so that was one of the other points was that it is a uh, state historic building, or on the state historic register. And then there was the cost of utilities at the town hall. Those would certainly go up due to mm -hmm. the larger space and the more in use time. Yeah, well, I think, again, you would have less use of, you know, that's not going to be a significant. If you use it more, it's going to be cost more, obviously. Right, right. But the, we hope it's used more. I mean, the, the idea is. Yeah, but you want to get used this. more, honey, with a little income coming in, too. To uh, offset mm -hmm. the, power, the power and the heat. No, I, right. income is good. Yeah. In terms of the historical society to visit us or something. I can charge the light. Really? Yeah. You won't get any town meeting lunch then. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you're a real art, Denise. You have a very strong negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then there was, um, we brought up, will there be a lease or a rental agreement? Or? The, um, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, you know, keep keep in mind that we're still in the very you know, yeah, yeah, but these yeah. are but these the are good field, questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, well, that's these that are the questions that we need. I know. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah. the impression that we got. Right. Yeah. right. Because well, they you're, were you there when they said um, mm -hmm. the the U-Hauls aren't coming next week, but they will be coming soon. 
they, 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 they are really convinced they, that it's they going are, very, yeah. very, very soon. Yeah. And I think it's and one it kind of was a little uncomfortable. Well, we can feeling. assure you that it's not anytime soon. Okay. And don't get me wrong, I, I, mm -hmm. I know they need more space. Mm -hmm. With all the programs they're doing and, mm -hmm. and everything and the kids' and programs. The and they need a bath. Yeah. I understand mm -hmm. that fully. But I just don't think the town hall mm -hmm. is... Uh, my feelings are for their programs, all their act, other activities that they do, mm -hmm. besides just doing books, mm -hmm. that could mm -hmm. still be done at the town hall. Mm -hmm. But they could still, so they would just have like the, the two buildings going mm -hmm. because you're not going to close, throw out a historical building with us on the second floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope. And, <laughs> Never do that. Yeah. Next, next time. And, and that wouldn't be as expensive. Uh, I mean, if, of ha the, that having that heat and the mm -hmm. electric and everything in the town hall when there's nothing mm -hmm. going on down there except yeah. books going out. Yep. That's definitely a possible model. That's, you know, yeah, that if you get to increase use of the town hall by having more programs there. That's another yeah. possible good way to go. And I, I like the idea that they're doing programs, mm -hmm. and I like the way they're running the library. I was a librarian before I uh, moved mm -hmm. here, okay, and before I taught uh, as a school teacher. But I was a librarian for a few years, and uh, I like libraries. But at the same time, I, I, you can get, as a town member, and as, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's a different way of looking Absolutely. at it, too. All, on, and as for usage, they keep statistics of children's books and uh, adult circulation. Mm -hmm. You're aware of all of that. And if the children's circulation is real high and the, and the adult circulation is minimal, it makes no sense to move the library down there, but rather to the, you know, to the places in the school that are for the, yeah. for the children's uh, part of it. I, I have to say this, yeah. although everyone's going to throw things at me. The old part of the elementary school had so much love with that old library. But I'm not going to throw anything at Before I was here, that was dry and, and that, went down in flames. I don't know why. That, that's the no, last thing on my list, too. All right, so let's go ahead. Okay, what do you want? Um, what will happen to the Historical Society collection, which we currently house upstairs, and we have mm -hmm. a few things downstairs? That's, that, that's one of our concerns. Um, if they do move to the town hall, what will happen to the Historical Society's items now at the town hall? The quilts, the photos, the um, window blinds, office. stage curtains, post office. We, we still had them restored. Yep. Yeah, the curtains right. are beautiful. I th the idea, uh, again, when we're throwing things out or when we were thinking about this whole thing, is to have you guys involved down there. Is it's not to be, this place is not to be exclusive of the historical society. I mean, you're a part of it and, and should be a part of it. And when I say a town center, that's the vision is, is you guys being there as well. It's, it's not to cut you out of anything. In fact, it's to put you more in to the circulation, if you will, or in the, into the public eye. Uh, you, you guys have a, a great little collection of things up there. I've been up there, so when Lisa was the uh, library, she took me upstairs to show me your, your stuff up there. Um, the, li the, um, the post office that you have down there is a beauty. So it's in no way to try to cut anything or anyone out. It's to try. So part of it, and even to get you here, is what would work for you down there, you know. And, and so maybe start thinking in those terms. Not so much that you're being cut out of anything or not being thought of. Is you know what would the historical society think? What could they bring to this, uh, um, you know, city? That's called city center, but town center. You know what? Because that you're, and that's why we we look for your input. How do we? How should we paint it, or what color should we paint? It? You're involved. We want you. You know, if if it is something that we do that you're not, we're not taking yourself out or leaving you know, you know somewhere else. We want you to be part of it. But we're also concerned about space. 
No, and I think the libraries down there. Um, I mean, we have a, mm -hmm. a full floor mm -hmm. upstairs of stuff. Yeah. Well, a, again, it may, or as Jason said, this is <clears throat> we're, we're trying to figure that out. Uh, you know, would it work? And again, your input: Would you like to be in there? Would you like to participate in that? Uh, those are the type of things to bring back to your your commission and, and, and talk about. And, but really, what I want you to get out of this is that you're, we want you involved. We want you to you have a voice at the table here. Uh, we want to be involved. Yeah, and, and uh, hopefully it's a, we, we're looking for a win-win for everyone. We're not trying to exclude anybody. We just want, you know, I just look at that or we, we, we do with it is how can we make it more viable? So it's not to try to cut anyone out or exclude anyone. It's, Let's get everyone at the table, and if it's having two spots, um, so be it, or leave it up the way it is, it's fine too. We're just, you know, if we don't look at things and, and talk about it and, and throw things around, you know, the same will be the same forever. And which this, uh, we don't always need change, I understand that. But I think we need to talk about it and find out what is best for the town. Yeah, well, we certainly want to be involved in the back and forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe um, <coughs> early on, we, we did not reach out early enough to you guys, um, I would say, mm. you know. Yeah, because I was going to say, <laughs> no, it did not, no. it did not, no. <laughs> but, it, yeah. but it was one of those things, sometimes when you don't realize, it, you know, and I'm glad right. you feel the way you do, but it's, 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 it's a loose conversation, hey, what do you think about this? But we should have, you know. I heard it was all your idea. Right one thing that we talked about that's not on this list, and uh, when we were having that, one of the meetings was there really should be somebody that works for the town that is assigned to make to publicize things to to actually mm -hmm. do that job because if you're trying if you have another job that you're doing that you have to do and that jo that's job's going to take priority but if there's somebody committed to it I know I used to be active in the Bundy Center for the Arts mm -hmm. and the Mad River Corral and all that and uh, uh, for a long time was on the Bundy board and we had people that we would hire that were in charge of of uh, just uh, fundraising in that case, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, not trying to get activities. We had plenty of activities, but we didn't have the money for it. And they were people that were good at it. And if they did their job, they, you know, they got a commission just like a tax collector does. And uh, there'd be a way to the salary or whatever you do, however you do that, would be uh, uh, on whether they actually do a good job. And, uh, and, and are you proposing that for promoting the? Yes, the, for uh, promoting uh, it and booking and all you know everything connected with the money coming into right. it. Yes, and then uh, uh, you don't have to think of closing other buildings and just putting everybody into the town hall. I personally would hate to see it become a closed building. I mean, now there are so many things that could be done in there if somebody was doing something. Mm -hmm. You gotta mm -hmm. put it in on something besides computers or front porch or mm -hmm. Facebook, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, but these these people, people that do that are people. phone call people too. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. call do a lot of yeah, them. There are a lot of them around in, in this area to too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the, the what library has brought up the fact that Warren turned their pretty much town hall over to their library. I don't know if you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. we've heard that. But, but, there, but I also heard that it's not just the library, and that they also are on are portable carts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But I also so, heard that they had a third floor. They do. They have mm -hmm. a whole other floor for meetings. For meetings. Yeah. And, okay. Um, activities mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay. So. So it's not really. A good comparison. No, it's not really. Okay, okay. Did she have a copy of those? I know she had a couple of. I know Katrina's been taking no. notes, but. Um, Do you have one that's got all the things that was we kind of.
Yeah. So is there any other questions or concerns that you ladies have tonight? Um, well, I just want to bring up, what is the current status of the closing of some of the Valley schools? Um, is Moore Town slated to be one of those schools that are closed? And I agree with Jason 100%. I think that that old original part of the school building would make the perfect library, perfect location for a library. Except it's being used as classrooms. Yeah, yes, but it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, I see. It's not going to be forever. There, well, that, that could be, but for now, the enrollment actually is increasing. So Fine. they have 45, 45 um, preschool mm -hmm. children that are going to be attending next year. They had to make so, extra classes when she was in preschool. Yeah. Um, preschool there's there's classes no classes. way that, about the, that any school in the valley the can, can be expanded they to accommodate what more town has here. They shouldn't get rid of it anyway. That's, no. that's uh, great. What about the cafeteria? The old one. The one that downstairs? The, the, the old, oh, downstairs, downstairs. Yes, downstairs. No, that's, that is not mm -hmm. being used as classrooms. No. So, but, but I also just wanted to say, I mean, you know me well enough that I've always fought to keep this village as is and that everything should be here. And I love that town hall. Mm -hmm. And I was here back in 1985. And, and everything else, and, that, and uh, Ray and I agreed that we should be involved in picking out the paint color because, you know, I, I said basically, well, go back and see what they did in 1985. <laughs> we'll do the same thing. You know, so. <clears throat> okay. So and the only other thing that I had, which is really not, well, it is pertinent, but um, what is the black lead situation at the town hall? Is that? We have this really well to eradicate okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Nothing on your post office. Nothing in okay. that corner. I just wondered how extensive it was. Pretty contained to the kitchen. Okay. In that yeah. corner by the refrigerator that's... Oh, it gets all the water. Yeah. yeah. Which we've hopefully corrected mm -hmm. by yeah. now. Oh. And the women that run the flower, it's not that they so low. <laughs> <laughs> You go tell them that. I do. I will. Yes, I do. I told them they couldn't cut the magnolia tree down. I can tell them that. <laughs> so we appreciate you coming in. Uh, appreciate your, your input. As we'll speak to the trustees there, but we'll be coming in as well. Uh, I'd like and we'll continue to have dialogue. And you know, I'm interested to see what they've come up with. Do they have some things that they're going to bring to us as you know, preliminary ideas um, and, and such. So you know, we know as much as we do at some point. And we have another meeting sometimes with them too. Oh, absolutely. That's what, when mm -hmm. we get that, we'll invite you when we have them right. in. So okay. we can involve you as well. Yeah. And then don't get all the seconds. No, no, no. So you'll be here, and then if, so if you have questions, we can all uh, sit down and, and take care of them then, rather than read it at the value plan or see yourself on TV. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, we would appreciate uh, being invited to the meeting. Thank you for listening to us. Yes. Well, thank you for taking the time. You're always welcome. You have more thoughts, to come up. Yeah. yeah. In the meantime, if you do, if there's things, oftentimes you may walk out and say, "Oh, we should have said that." Just um, call Cheryl or email Cheryl or however you best like to communicate with her or Katrina, and they will um, pass it on to. Or right. yeah. through Ray, I guess. Yeah. 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 She was 15 years ago. I know. She used to All right, ladies, one more sidetrack. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. 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 Taking me all but I'm getting this. Well, yeah. the end results good. Jason, you want to Sure. Yeah. All right, county administrator. Okay, you got to get Yep.
just wait for Ray for a moment. Uh, so you just started working for the Valor Report? Uh, yeah, I graduated from Plymouth State University on May 19th, and I started work on the 21st. Wow. Yeah. Only two days? And yep. All right. Well, congratulations. Thanks. So are you, uh, have you attended many select board meetings in the Valley, or? Um, this is my first Moortown one. I'm yep. supposed to go to the Facing one tomorrow night, and then I went to the Harwood Select Board, and that was riveting. I bet, oh, the Harwood School. Yeah. Yeah, I bet that would be interesting. Good. Yeah, Chris used to come a little bit, um, and Lisa, but uh, I, I haven't seen Lisa for a long time, although she calls me so well. Yeah, you never know what's going to come up with these meetings, that's for sure. So Paul Gill was sent to me now. Um, let me go back here. He said, first, I'm terribly sorry not to have made it tonight. Had it done for tomorrow night. I thought, Tom, you handled it very, the situation very well. Cheryl, I couldn't make out names. If you could send me the list of those who spoke and their associates. Uh, list of who spoke, I'll get a draft decision out tomorrow. So then you can discuss it at your next meeting. And then at that time, you'll probably right. revise, or revise or it or approve or deny it. They're ready. Thank you. Anything with your town administrator report? Lover's Lane. So I submitted a TA-65, which is the reimbursement for um, what we've already spent. Um, the grant was 65000 so we've already spent 34000 So you have bids here later on. Mm -hmm. um, I submitted for thirty-four thousand nine fifty-three. The projected cost, total cost of the whole thing was seventy-three oh ninety-five. Um, we got the grant for sixty-five thousand seven eighty-six, which is ninety percent. So the grant balance, bottom line, the grant balance that we have to spend is thirty thousand eight thirty-three. So that's what these things got to be less than. Martin estimated. Um, when we did the grant, Martin estimated the rest of the project as 19258 to finish. So if he's getting closer to his estimates, we should be okay. Yeah. Well, uh, right. depends on what the other people think of Martin's <laughs> estimates. We have 10% match anyway, even if it comes in lower. Yes, but it won't come in lower. Mm -hmm. um, I can't see it coming in lower than that. Because that's, we still have to buy guardrails, too. Yeah. All right, so that's good. And we'll open those up at uh, new business later on. Next. Um, do you remember the accident in Middlesex where there was a gas spill and the fire? Yes. Yep. Everyone else? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, I contacted our insurance company that wouldn't pay for the claim. It was 24,000 uh, 24, in uniforms. So then I went to the company, the insurance mm -hmm. company of the, um, of the truckers. DNC Transportation. And they gave us um, a check for the cost of the new uniforms. Um, the in-between, my doing that and Steve ordering the uniforms, he's changed tactics on me. And the order, uniforms that he ordered were new Tech Gen 71, which are a different fabric. Um, I couldn't ask the insurance company to pay for an upgrade in our uniforms. So the bottom line, we are $2,469.91 in lieu. There is nothing in the fire station budget left to cover these uniforms. So I approached Steve as such, and the fire department is uh, supposed to pay the town 
$2,469.91. Out of their, some of their funds they've raised? Yeah. Did he understand the sole process and how that worked and how did, how did this happen? It's, he should have told me. I mean, and then we could have been prepared for this. So he knew exactly what type of uniforms he was authorized to purchase. Okay. Yeah, they're canvas. And they got the new Gen Tech, which is better quality, right. and $177 each more. Mm -hmm. right. So if they want to upgrade, I think that's mm -hmm. fine, but it, and, and they seem to be paying the tab, so I, that's okay. Now, I, I could have had a couple of more options. I went directly to him first. Another option would be I have a grant approved from VLCT because I saw this coming on to pay 50% of that. Um, so I don't plan on getting a grant um, and paying for half of that. This is not coming out of town money. It's coming after fire department money. And they need to be accountable for what they get, yeah, is, my, is my view. If you want me to change that, I will, but I don't think it's teaching them anything. No, and we're not looking to teach them anything, but we just want them to understand that if they're going to upgrade, it sounds like he's taking responsibility of it, so I don't have an issue. Um, I, we just need to uh, be more transparent about yeah, it. I shouldn't have said teach. I mean, right. I'm, trying I, to, just, I'm trying to, well, really, I'm trying to. It, it is, it, it, it is, it is, finances. right. And what do we call that? But I we understand, we're just making them responsible for what, uh, he didn't hesitate and said that they had money for it. So I'm just letting you know that you're going to see that expenditure in their expenditures. But when I get the check from him, okay. you'll have an offset. Yeah. That's all that I have. When I suggest to Tom that um, anything like this happens in the future, that, yeah, okay, they're paying for them, but they should have let Cheryl know so that she didn't have to be stressed out over it. Yeah, she shouldn't. I'm going to, I've already, in my notes, I'm going to give Steve a call just to, and Steve's really mm -hmm. good, typically, mm -hmm. and is not trying to pull things with us, but um, sometimes we just got to remind them that there's a process, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, yeah. there's a proper process. Well, also that there's help available to him to try to buy things as cost-effectively as possible, and he may not know all of the Sources. Exactly. And I'm available. But All he's going to do is just exactly. you were there. say, you know, I didn't get the ones, mm -hmm. the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, he said they weren't available, so he got these other ones. Let mm -hmm. me know, you know? Yeah. Right. But, right. but it's more, we can help you rather than you're doing it wrong. Yes. Right, exactly. We want to show. Absolutely. Can we have just a, uh, one more question to go back to the lane? So you said the original estimate was seventy five thousand for the for the whole whole phases, right? Mm -hmm. And and the work we probably did was for around forty thousand, thirty something. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then there should be like forty thousand left. I don't know how to come the total. You said we only had nineteen thousand left to do the job. Yeah. I'm not following how we get the 19,000. And the grant. So the grant was 65,000. The grant is 90% of the cost. Yes, which is 65,000. Okay, so the we grant. Had, we had a bill before, I believe, that I submitted 34,000 to okay. TA for mm -hmm. 34,000, which is 90% of Dubois' bill that was 38,000, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess that's. Still three, I, I'm, I'm just not following any numbers here. Um, so, so if it's 65 and 34, it's still only 30. We've got 30,880 left of the grant. Why don't you hold that until we do the bids? Yeah. And I once agree. we do the bids, and then we can do that math and, and go yeah. backwards with it. Yeah. I know exactly what you're yeah. thinking. And I just want to get that last number so we can plug it in mm -hmm. sure. and make it. Yeah, that's also why I asked what happens to the right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. so when we get those numbers, yeah. we can do all that I'll math. Put the file in right there. Yeah. And we can, uh, you can get that. So, Cheryl, you're all set with uh, the account administrative report.
Yes. Ray, do you have anything? Of course, reports. Uh, okay, so I, I looked at the uh, desert development site and yeah, no, I have that for the business. Uh, and uh, so she wasn't around. I looked at it, but and I did talk to Mark about Mark's look and agreed. We can do a little bit of ditching up there to, I think, get rid of the water on our lawn. We don't want it to have a whole new ditch coming down and out into the field. I mean, that'd be a lot of work. But I think that we can solve the problem in our lawn with minimal work by the town to do that. And, uh, and Mark said he to do it sometime in the summer. And he was going to talk to them uh, directly about it. Perfect. So we'll, you guys, thanks for communicate that to Deb. We have discussed it. Thank you, Katrina. Kelly? Thank you. So I think this kind of ties into grievance hearings, but when I was getting home, Sean's aunt stopped me. Her and his grandmother had gotten a letter from the town saying that they had more land than they didn't have and they had to bring a note into the town and what did I know about it? And it had to be in by Friday. So let me stop you right there. <laughs> <laughs> so that does go into grievance hearings. So hold that story because we would be waiting for that. Yeah. Perfect. There are several, <laughs> several stories. <laughs> you had to get live. So I'll hold on to it. All right. So <laughs> Yeah, if you got grievance hearings, um, anecdotes we can list. Jason, do you have anything? No, I don't. Uh, Katrina, is anything going on in your mind? Mine's the same thing. <laughs> All right. Um, a few things that I have here uh, that were under reports and communications. And I uh, um, hope I wasn't hearing this name, but Catherine Friedman, South Hill Road. That's my neighbor. All right, uh, was there a discussion here on the June 7 meeting? No, she she talked to me. That's referring to talking to me. Okay. Yes. So can you... So I told her to email me so I had something to give to you guys. I guess several years ago, you guys went up and dug out a ditch slash creek behind her house. Do you remember? Anybody remember that? <laughs> Where is it? It's South Hill Road, Road. Road. Road is still right above me, so 1760 somewhere. Was that up near George, where George is? Yes. Lived? Yes. Yeah. Adjacent to George's land there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she said that it had filled back in and she wanted you or Martin to come look at it, was what, she, and so I stopped that email in there to tell you that. All right. So at some point, can you get in touch with Martin and, and just check this out? And yep. Fine. I'll give you the email so you don't yep. um, forget. And so the next thing, we, and this is from David Russo, mm -hmm. uh, he would like to formally request to be considered by the Select Board for reappointment uh, to the Development Review Board. Um, so Dave has been on, I don't know, what, three years? No, oh, no, he's been on for probably eight years now. Has it been that long? Yeah. So, he's, um, he's very good. No, I he's understand. very knowledgeable, he's very polite, very... Um, so, uh, I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, or reappoint Dave Russo to the Development Review Board. I'll second that. Any further discussions? Just a question, has anyone else applied for the slot and are there other slots opening? Or? There are nothing else open now, that's mm -hmm. the only one. And no one else has applied for I notified, um, I notified I sent the notice of the board members mm -hmm. and when their terms expired mm -hmm. to John Riley. Mm -hmm. So, the yes. one who applied for mm -hmm. was. Um, Is that something that we're supposed to post in any way? For, you? for reappointment, mm -hmm. um, if it was a home new position on there, a new member who hadn't, mm -hmm. who hadn't mm -hmm. um, served on there, and, and you know. And, um, yes. Yeah. I don't think there's any for policy. Reappointment, yeah, there's really, mm -hmm. for reappointment of someone who'd already been on there for that number of years, mm -hmm. I don't think it would be worth our while to... No, I'm just checking to see if there is a process that we're supposed there to follow. There is no policy there, there but I mean, it's always good to have it to, mm -hmm. to put out there, the, you know, for the members that are... Mm -hmm. 
and I sent that to John Riley, so let me use the chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Questions? Any other questions? All in favor of uh, reappointing Dave Russo to the DRB, vote aye. 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 There we go. I think it was the last term that um, we put it out there, mm -hmm. and all the, the mm -hmm. whole members came in and you had to meet with them and talk to mm -hmm. them then, so. All right, and um, I guess that's all. I don't have anything in addition to that. So old business, um, and we'll come back and we'll do the invoices and the duties. Mold bits. So I asked for three, I got two, um, and then I put them into this spreadsheet, which is much easier to understand than reading the bits. <laughs> because they're each like 17 pages long. So you asked for so, uh, GW Salvage, Clean and Surf Pro and Surf Pro didn't elect to come visit and give us a bit. Okay. So there's some things you see that GW Savage is including in their bid that Pure Clean is not, and vice versa. Um, and I met with both of these people. GW Savage is a worst case scenario he put in to remove the whole kitchen. This is uh, this is only mold remediation. It's not to rebuild anything either. This mm -hmm. is just a grid mold. Per cleans is the minimum. They're only planned to move, remove up to the stoves. So I think if you look at it, GW Savages can't get worse, but pure cleans can go up. What was the actual uh, request? Yeah, can we see the RFP? The RFP. I, I sent them the, um, the report. Report from them. Okay. With, so it was their suggestions, Everyone based the on their report. Yeah, everyone had the same yeah based on their PD's air quality report. The, this from PD, yeah. they okay. were all given this, and these were their specifications that these people suggested and they, to be done. And they, specified, they said they thought the whole kitchen needed to be pulled out. When Perclean went and looked at it and did his own examination, he didn't feel that that needed to happen. Mm -hmm. And GW Savage said, well, he would put it in there, and then, of course, if they didn't, the price would come down. I, so he did worst case scenario. Okay. So, so this looks to me that if I try to equalize the bids, um, no, it's not that obvious. Did you? No, it's not obvious. So are you saying that Pure Clean's bid does not comply with KMB's recommendations? Technically, no, it does not because they don't feel that it needs to be same old, same old. Yeah. Well, you can't, you can't give them specifications. And if they this don't, is their recommendation. Well, well, if, not, yeah, but if, I would say if KND recommended that, yeah. that's what the RFP should have been. Yeah, that's what the RFP was. Yeah, right. But, 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 you, but you, if you, they you, didn't bid on it, if they made their own evaluation, they came down and okay. they said, well, I think it's contained in here. I'm not okay. going for yeah. it. Yeah, that's... Yeah. What they said, yeah. Um, Pearl Clean did it on their site visit. GW Savage went by the RFP. No, GW Savage did a site visit. They both yeah, did. Yes, they did do a site visit, but I mean, but they, GW which, Savage's bid. Yes, it's by the RFP. <laughs> yes. Um, and theirs just includes more as well. As you can see mm -hmm. in the, the very first part, they're going to, they, you know, they are going to be, they have to clean. It, yeah, it varies. Do you know uh, why Pure Clean? is planning on negative air fan for 10 days and GW Savage for three? Um, GW, I spoke to GW Savage and they said three was the, was the standard. We asked them. But mm -hmm. per plane, I didn't get an answer as to why. So if you, look, if you look at just line by line of the ones that they are, they both have, they're very similar in price. Mm -hmm. Going back to Jason's question, my guess is, mm -hmm. if you look on the bottom line, yeah. GW Savage is going to do a, 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 mm -hmm. an air and surface disinfectant. Which their company gonna, owns this yeah. system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is a fogging thing that will go through the whole building. Yeah. So if anything's disturbed afterwards. Oh, and the other thing, so the HEPA vacuuming, where it says mm -hmm. twice 
for one price. Mm -hmm. GW Savage told me, because theirs was double this. So I said, why is yours double what my other bids are? What are you doing extra? And he said it was industry standard to do it first thing, and then once they removed all the damaged materials, to do it again. Mm -hmm. But he said they would do that at one price. At, you know, they do it twice for the price of one. Do you have the actual bids handy? Yeah. Okay. I just want to take a look at the warranties. Like a good question. A warranty? I, don't, I didn't see anything on these for warranties. <laughs> on the bids themselves. Yeah. Really? Because they don't do a warranty. Because, I mean, this water came from the foundation. Right. It could happen again. You know, I mean, when, when you do a cleanup, this for a fire or something, it would be, you know, no warranty or whatever you could have. I can't see how they would do a warranty. So, um, does, does candy come out and inspect their candy work? Candy comes out afterward and does another air quality. Yes. Mm -hmm. And GW Savage doesn't have you pay mm -hmm. their final bill until that happens. Yeah. Pure mm -hmm. Clean did not say that. Okay, I have a little clarification on the 10 days of negative air fan that is actually five days duration for two machines. Yeah, I was breaking it down by the, mm -hmm. the days. Yeah. <clears throat> no insurance. The per, per, the per there day no price. No, 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 this I'm letting like, you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So this is on us. Where, where are we going to find this It's on us. <laughs> I guess um, we need to spend the money. There's no question that the building needs to be cleaned. I think Savage, it, it seems like, is more, uh, more complete. Or it, I got a better yes. feeling from him than the, than the other guy. Mm -hmm. This is my idea. I'm paying for this. I don't know how mm -hmm. you feel about it, but um, just in the, just in the um, town hall alone, Joe Gabbari is going to be like, Four thousand dollars. I'm estimating. Um, we had to have parts to fix the furnace before the state of Vermont would inspect the building. That was eight hundred. KD was five hundred, and now eighty six hundred. So um, to pay it, um, I would think about if I were you, was adding it into the tax rate. When you get to that time and stop and look what the state tax rate is going to be, the town tax rate I think is going to be okay. Um, it would add a half a penny to the mm -hmm. tax rate, but we'll see. But that's an option. Or you have the capital, you have the capital, so say, the, the capital reserve fund. All right, so we have a little time. Yeah. And we'll I see how the tax rate looks. It's, it's certainly a consideration. Yeah, we don't have a grand list yet, so I can't tell you mm -hmm. what it looks like, but. And of course, I hadn't asked anybody for the cost to put it back together. We don't know what's coming out yet. Yeah, but that's, um, as soon as we know that, so we're, we're going to mm -hmm. want to hop on that, because that might be something that we throw into the, the rate as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you, I mean, if you approve this, they'll make them be here next week. Yeah, well, I think we, yeah, need, to we, we, yeah. need, to, we need to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the only question is, do we go with Berkeley or GW Savage? Um, based on your recommendation as far as gut feeling, mm -hmm. I, I, I take that, and it just looks like uh, Savage may be doing a little bit more. I think the, the mm -hmm. last thing that air and service disinfectant. Well, one thing they brought up was cleaning all the dishes. like. If, if we went on pure clean, how am I supposed to disinfect all those dishes? Right. You know? I was like, oh, good call. They actually, Savage, GW Savage actually takes them off site and watches the plates, yeah. disinfects mm -hmm. them, and bring them back when they're done. I'll make a motion that we hire a GW Savage. Callie seconds. Any uh, further questions? All in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank you. You want the amount in your quote? I know. Oh. And your bid and your. He wants to put the amount in his yeah, for yes. $8,602.12. Eight
If you want, I can get one of those to send to you. <laughs> Thank you, Katrina, for putting so, it in a... Uh, oh, no problem. The cabinets that were there, have they you know, removed now? No, nothing has been touched. So does that have to be removed before they can do their work? Yeah, yes, no. that's included in oh, this. Oh, they're actually going to take the cabinets to their facility. Oh, and, right there. Okay, I'm sorry. And then they will determine. They will let us know if they can be saved before they do anything to them, because they also will give us a bid for the rebuild. Right. Well. Thank you. No, I, this company is good. My brother's house burned down, and they took all the stuff out. Yeah, it's amazing. What I've worked with them before too. So they yeah, yeah, really, uh, so. did a good job. Yeah. So we need. With the stuff that they are able to rehabilitate and they do all right with them. All right. Um, approve the minutes from uh, May 21st, 2018. Uh, any other old business? Is there any other old business? Yeah, speaking of the town hall, mm -hmm. um, painting looks good so far. What's going to be done with the cupola? There seems to be a, a clabber that's. I've I talked to him about that. that a couple of times. He had, it was to no fault of us. He had a problem with his lift. He had planned to get it at one time. Someone else took it, blah, blah, blah. I know the lift is gone now, and that's how he reaches the cupola. Right. So I haven't asked him since then, but I can get an answer for you. But, but he doesn't do actual carpentry. Well, the bid said bid. clapboards. Cla and so I, I said to him that would be included. Yeah. I was at the town hall with him, and I said that would be included in fixing it. Okay. So it's something he'd have to, he said he would have to remove, fix, put back up. Because mm -hmm. if okay. he's going to paint it, he should fix it. So. Well, it's part of the contract. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if it'll get done this year, but he does know it's part of his contract. Okay. All right. Because this is the first time I've noticed the actual white clapboard mm -hmm. with the hole in it. I hadn't noticed that before. And of course, the slats on the. Numbers are painted gray yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. <clears throat> And I will go look at it because I can tell if it wasn't pressure washed. But he had the pressure washer. He did have it. He had it right in the back of his yeah. truck. I think he did. It, so remember we we talked about that. we talked about that and said, so, yes. "Well, that didn't seem to make much difference." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then it was good. like maybe two weeks before he got to paint more than just one section. So yeah. Yeah. I did see him with a bucket and bleach water too at one point when he was up on the lift yeah. wiping and painting. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if it didn't come off, the paint will probably stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, any other old business? I have a, oh, actually one more thing. Up, but mm -hmm. I have a new um, BLCT finally came out with their own social media policy, which we literally just had oh. to fill in our name. So I just did that today, so I will email it all to you. <laughs> so it'll be super simple. <laughs> approved by our insurance. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, now I'm looking for approval for May 21st, 28th. I move we approve the minutes of 521. Oh, okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Aye. All right, moving on to new business. Let's come up here. Um, Lover's Lane bits. So why don't you go ahead and open those? And then we have some math we want to figure out where the money is. And okay, Katrina, there's two bids. I know, hold on, I, I printed that paper. Do you want me to grab it now? Or no, I've got it right here. Oh, okay. All right, so okay. we've got two, two bids. bids. And the first one is Duke Voice Construction. I just want to be clear that I had, um, I didn't go to the site meeting and I wasn't involved in this bid process at all for Duke Voice. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ray. So we have a bid from Du Bois Construction, Middlesex, Vermont, $40,810. Uh, Jeff Newton was the person that uh, uh, made this bid. Uh, and it says slope stabilization and road work, including guardrail as described by Martin Cameron in site meeting 523.18. Just out of curiosity, the guardrail, mm -hmm. it's going to be a standard one, not like the one that we have on the hill here. Is that correct? I don't know, I don't know what Martin's standards are. You don't like the one that's on the hill? No, I like the one that's on the hill. Yeah. I, I that's, that's what we're using now. 
Okay. Okay. If you want to get one. I don't know. That takes a lot of hours for that. I think the one on the hill is mm -hmm. that style is because the snow goes under. It is, yeah. Okay, this uh, the second bit is from um, Griffin and Griffin excavating the north face. Of it. Uh, total price $54,250 lump sum. Um, and their uh, work scope is, uh, yeah, I'll let you read it, but it's, again, uh, it's the slope mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, 40, so, 40, 000, 8, no, 40,000, 40,000, as opposed to 54,250. So, um, so I got an email from Martin that said um, he has no preference as to which contractor is chosen. He hopes the board <coughs> awards a contract tonight, awards the bid tonight and goes with low bidder. Well, I'd like to go with the low bidder as well. Um, I, I guess the only thing, I mean, I wasn't there at the site meeting. So I don't, I'm assuming uh, it was a slope stabilization. State. Slope stabilization and road work is the scope of work, whereas um, Griffin Griffin's a bit more detailed. But I would, uh, I guess, speak with Martin and to be sure that their scope is the same scope that we're talking about. Um, one thing we'll notice that Griffin does have used guardrail. Does the new boys bill have guardrail on that? Not bid? It does not say either way. It's a fairly um, um, generic. Plus. The cheap, the lesser. That's a dollar, a dollar Is that right? a foot. Less. And the real shiny stuff? Yes. Okay. Yep. So, um, let's just figure out the, the map of where we're at with this project. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, whole, the entire project cost was $73,095. That was the estimate? Pardon me? That, that was, was the estimate. That total was estimate. the estimate. And that was estimated after New Boys stabilized the road. And how much have we spent so far? We have spent $38,000. Plus anything else, or it's just 38 straight? Um, I don't remember what Du Bois was, but it was 38 something. Well, I've got the figures here. What you have left available in the grant is 30,833. Um, now, Martin estimated this work here when I did the grant. He estimated this work as being 19,258, so there's your difference. So that's what I did the... How did so you see off $20,000? We don't have the RFP that they got sent in. We didn't have an RFP, Martin, and this. Mm -hmm. I have, um, are any of the bids broken down for gravel and stone and everything? We have, uh, Gravel road, 220 feet by one, one inch deep. Uh, reuse existing stone fill and purchase the extra stone fill needed. 190 by 10 by two inches, or no, by two feet deep. So Martin estimated three to five inch stone on the outer banks. We already have four to five inch stone tied into the river. My estimates are 511 yards of three to five inch stone at 16 Three to five foot stone. Sorry, three to five foot stone at $16 a yard. So I don't know if they broke down any stone or whatever. Not but that was his mm -hmm. estimate, was 19,258. That's what I'm on the map for. 
So we have 40,833. Our low bid is 40,008, right? All right, so we get $10,023. Okay. That's going to come out of our pocket, unless I can talk Dick Hawks. You know, I don't, feel, I don't feel right about this at all. <coughs> you know, once again, Dubois doesn't come back and, and spell out anything. Um, these, uh, an RFP comes from the selector. Okay, and not the road. And so, you know, bottom line, I, I, I make the motion that we throw these out. And what would you, would you have uh, another hour? Because I can't, I mean, I can't compare these. Dubois doesn't break anything down. Griffin and Griffin says used, used guard. Yeah. Okay, I mean, you know, so I mean, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know what the specifications were. Do we have the RFP? I don't have it. Oh. Martin did everything. We didn't even know that he had asked for bids. Okay, so this is a select this is a select yep. board issue. So you made a motion? I made a motion. I was surprised when Ray said this was going to be on the agenda because we didn't even know that they were due. So there's been a motion made, Jason seconded it. Further discussion? <clears throat> I mean, I know that, like I said, I didn't go to the meeting. I know that Griffin and Jeff and Martin all met together and talked over the job. And I'm pretty sure they all agreed on quantities at that time at the meeting. So I, that's all. That's all I can, I, I'm sure that we could give you quantities. And it'd probably be the same as Griffin and Griffin. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I personally, I think, um, to what John says, I, I think we need to get clarification. I don't know if we need to, to throw out the bids at this point, mm -hmm. but I think we should get the Martin in here to get clarification. Okay. And, and then at that point, we may decide, you know what, these are bad bids and we mm -hmm. didn't have it. Um, there's a few things that have gone wrong here. The, the process, although, it's, so I, I can't say anything, I just don't know enough about how, how it all No, that's, that's, that's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. But what I would like to do is, is get Martin here, ask him, and then then we can make some decisions. That's, that's what mm -hmm. I would do. So I would ask everyone to defeat this um, uh, motion by John. Uh, I'll, I'll withdraw the motion. So, you all right with that? Sure. And why don't we get Martin? Uh, mm -hmm. Second. Yes. Okay. That's how they are. <laughs> uh, Second. Gotcha. <laughs> and if we can get him. Yeah, he's supposed to be coming in the next meeting anyway about the, um, the evaluation draft. All right. So, why don't we put some extra time there? In the meantime, let him know that we would like additional. Uh, Paperwork or, or backup on that. And if I get it ahead of time, I'll. Yeah, you can send it out to us if we have it prior to the meeting. That would be. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I. Mm -hmm. John is no, a question. Mark does a great, great mm -hmm. job, and he should be involved in the process at the final decision. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't even have a problem with the bid that doesn't give detail, you know, as long as it's as per the RFP, and I've seen the RFP. That's exactly all right. Let's right. just get everything to make sure we have it. Okay. But it can't be one of these handshake things where we talked about it because it's mm -hmm. got to be, I got to see something in writing. Thank you, everybody. Um, so now we get to talk about what Callie brought up grievance hearings. And, and I put that on the agenda for you so just so that you would know that they are doing grievance meetings this week, Monday through Friday. Friday. Yeah. Maybe possibly Saturday. I think Friday's the bell booked up to me. So I got uh, Cheryl called me when we were in a discussion last Thursday or Wednesday or Thursday. It made me aware of, I guess, beginning of the week, 600 letters had been sent out, roughly 600 from the listers, stating of changes in uh, appraisals or parcel sizes. And I guess the phones have been crazy. Since yes. then, um, and you folks may have—I know Callie, you spoke to at least your aunt. I think we've all had probably more than one caller or not, or personally, or feeling it. 
So, um, if anyone can make the meetings this week, I don't know if anyone's personally involved, but um, there's a schedule Thursday Friday. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yeah. I think it's important just to kind of sit in. It's, it goes from like 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Not, not a prayer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I've heard you agree to be on one, actually two. Away. One is Ray one. He wasn't sure if it was 10 or 10. Oh, I have to look for okay. schedule. Right. Right. Ray one. So as long as John, if someone, and if you're here, like tell me, wait, if there's Saturday, let me know, and I could sit down. And, but I think it's important for the select board to get, to tell you what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, it seems... It may be normal for this number of, to come back in grievance. If you sent out 600, how many we got back? 30 or whatever. I don't know that number. I don't know if it's good or bad. So if we can spend a little time in those hearings to, to find out what are the mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious as to, <laughs> is it clerical error? Is it just plain shoddy work? Remember, we paid a lot of good money to have these tax men and stuff. Both Cheryl and I had to agree on our land. And mine took Cheryl Lynn and I 10 minutes to prove them wrong. It was following the deed back and we had a map. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there's 80, 80, 80 or 81 hearings Wednesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, and Friday right? so far. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we, that's, uh, you know, obviously over 10%, but I don't know what. What's the norm in the industry? I mean, there's got to be a norm that. Well, they that usually comes back. get it done in one day when the grievances, but well, this also. Is, this has never happened. Um, all yeah. of the town of Moortown's properties change except for the town hall, the size of the lots. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's what mine was a lot size change. Yeah, that all of Moortown's land, town of Moortown's land changed. The library, the old town hall, oh. the fire department. So have we, as a town, have we, uh, we have, any grievance? We have not. We've looked for, um, just today, we were going through stuff to try to find. We don't have maps of our land. So we can't file a grievance if we have nothing to prove. But I mean, if I find an error, I'm sure I'd just go back to the, go back to them afterwards and they'll fix it. But I mean. Mm -hmm. But just on the face of it, that sounds unlikely. Just you got there's eleven parcels that yeah. we have, and I think mm -hmm. we had eleven letters. Yeah, so that's. Mm -hmm. From what I'm hearing, the letters were dated in April, and a lot of people didn't get them until no. last week. It wasn't dated. Did you bring yours with you? I did. What they said was the grand list as of April 2018. Mm -hmm. okay. There was no date on the letter. Okay. There's no date of the letter that they sent out. I got a letter and I'm not even on the grand list as owning my property. So, but they had very little time to file the agreement. Right. right. The time yeah. they had yes. less than yeah. 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 And they should not send out letters with no date. Yeah. That's letters right. went out not this past Friday, the Friday before. And you had to buy Monday at 3 o'clock today with your deadline. Right. These are the letters. Pardon me. Is this a computer generated thing? Um, well, uh, they, they hand every single one of them. They, this is the one that our current use yeah. change and stuff. So, so where are people are getting the, on the top is this town, yeah. more town notice of taxpayer, taxpayers as of April 1st, 2018. So that, again, just the brand list, that's when that is set. What was this date stamp? Was that something that's when I got it? You received, myself. that's your receipt. Yeah. yeah. I got it. Yeah, so there's no dates on yes, that. Yes, that's, not, that's just not right. No, date of notice, 525. Okay. That's, well, what, that's right. On that one, that's the change of current use. That's right. Date of notice, yeah. 25. Well, that's, that's my day. current use one. That's my grieved one. Is there a date on that down by your thumb, Tom? I'm looking. I don't think there is. It just says uh, written appeals must be received at the town office by 3 p.m. 6 4. Yeah, there was no send date. Yeah, no, that, that's not that's right. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. this one there's no. All right. So I've asked Cheryl to put the listers on our next meeting as well. Um, mm -hmm. But again, if, if you guys have the opportunity 
to, and I know, Don, you're going to go to a couple. Cheryl and I plan to send them on some too, so we can take notes. Is the due date statutory, or is that something that we can change? Because I don't think this is, it's very fair to mail out something at 525 and require a written appeal by 640. That was a lot of the complaints. The yeah. first thing that was out of people's mouths on, yeah. mm -hmm. the, on the calls that I got. Um, I don't know if it's statutory okay. or not. If this I, is within our jurisdiction, I would want to extend that date. By I, 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 no, we cannot extend the date. No, we cannot extend the date once it's been done. That's what I know because I said mm -hmm. the same thing as mm -hmm. you. When they, were, when they were mailing them out, they originally were going to use the bulk rate that we use for our town reports. And the post office told them that they could not guarantee people would get them within their 10-day window. So they've got some sort of 10-day window they were working with, so they actually bought stamps and put them on. After I stamp $600. <laughs> All right, so we know. So there's some 10-day window in there. I'm not sure what it is, though. Okay, so I, it's just something we need to, to look at. And, um, you know, there's just not enough information right now to, to mm -hmm. say anything. That's why I just want you to, you know, if you get calls, take good notes um, mm -hmm. as far as what the problems are. Given the timing, is, is there anything more that we can do? Because we're not going to meet again until this deadline has elapsed. Well, the deadline is today. Today. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, they can't yeah, change that. Yeah. I know that because I asked Sherilyn. If they, well, I say, well, you know, could they extend the deadline? And she says, no, once they set the deadline, it's the deadline. But it would start over again if they sent out new letters? If they sent out new letters, it would. Okay. So, there's, yeah, so let's look into let's see the possible okay. solutions to, let's find out what kind mm -hmm. of problems we got. And, and are these people being, um, so at your meeting, show you went in and you showed them three documents or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I had copies. So, so I went in. I had copies of a survey from 1915, and then I had surveys. Any time we gave the kids a piece of land or anything, we had a survey done. Um, did they? Did they say you had less property than yeah. what you? Yeah. So. Yeah. They were saying so I had more. They must have made some sort of mapping. I had surveys of everything I did, so mine was very... Uh, many of them... Uh, so you went in and, and you, you said, okay, you, you owe me five acres. I gave them at. this. I said, well, we have 48, 45 acres in this lot, 95 acres in this lot, and 125 acres in this lot, which is 165.60 acres. Then I had the surveys taking them off. Sherilyn, we gave her 10.10 acres, Courtney, 10 acres, Noise bought 9.72, Gary's sister got... 1.52 and we sold Sanguinetti 10 acres. So that left 124.28 acres. Yours was a but they, error. But they told you you had 102. They or... told us we had, yeah. They told us we had 105 and it was 124.28. All right, so you went back and you gave them this information. Where, so they just gave you that, that acreage back. Where did it come from? Well, well, um, who did they take it for? Did they adjust someone else's that may have gotten yeah, more than Katrina? That's exactly. So, like, mine, mine is connected yeah. to my neighbor, which is why I was up talking to her, because when I was going through my deeds, our deeds were actually intertwined. The land used to be laid out yeah. different. So when they gave me more, they took it from her. So by proving mine, I'm proving hers. You're proving her to less. So then they have to send out more letters because those people's property is going to change again. Change again. Yes. Yeah, see, they had my sister-in-law, Susan, at 1.4, one, at one and I had a survey in here that shows we gave her 1.52. Yep. So I, I told the listers that these surveys are in the vault. I just made, exactly. I just made copies of them. Um, so. Right. It'll be interesting to see what everyone's come up with, and then we'll need to as it's far as you with the uh, math there, we've seen people that have lost 0.5, we've seen people that have gained 50 acres. Central Barrel's gained 22 acres. Yeah. Rick probably lost some. I don't know how much he lost. I'd like to sell that new 50 that I just got. <laughs> right. uh, Until before your tax bill comes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
so, so I just gained 20, 18 acres or 20 acres, whatever it was. So there's, a, there's an issue, the select board is aware of it, and we need to try to figure out what it is. Um, and I know mine was all there, it was just done wrong on the tax maps. Right. Yeah, so we need to find where these areas are coming from, because if we spend Mine was a map too. Yeah. Mine was laid out on a map in the vault. Used to be correct. Yeah. And you have you got one, but yours was only like I went from I have one acre. Yeah. It, it went down to 0.97. <laughs> 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 now that you left Damn, right? <laughs> but okay. now that you left it like that and you didn't fix it, you've got a non-conforming lot. No, that's true. That's, you have not right. one acre lot to build or do anything, put on a porch, put in a garage, anything. But and my deed says, is, you know, it measures out, my deed has got one, it's whatever it is, 212 and a half feet square. So I, I don't But that doesn't that. make a difference now because mm -hmm. now your, your property tax map says that you have less than an acre. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to build something or do it on, the DOB or whatever will just say, We're sorry, you can't because you don't have that nature. Even though your deed says it. The deed should govern. No. Yeah. Survey governs. Yeah. Yeah. Survey. So that's something you need to look at, right? Well, then I missed the deadline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. All right. So, wow. Um, do you have a survey? I have a survey when I brought mm -hmm. it. Well, whoever got your land. Just bring it in, drop it off, and then I'm sure that they'll fix it for you, Ray. But that's not good to have a non conforming lot. Mm. Yeah, I have one. Stinks. <laughs> I mean, it just might be point nine seven. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, move along. We could have um, a long one tonight. Start at five. Uh, is there any other new business? Let's see, none. Uh, just want to, we, we have some things to sign. Um, uh, Cheryl, can you just check in with Ron on the Grow Compost Appeal to the Environmental Court? And I know you sent that an article that was on Vermont Dig and the legislator has changed. You know, so that, that really is, you know, has taken care of that. But they, they probably will just ignore what the court, because at this point it's really mm -hmm. um, moot. You saw that the Moortown Landfill was fined $200,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. on the national Yeah, that was, it was based on the sludge. Remember that they took him? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It was back a few years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Years, yeah. I am going to bring back up Facebook and the social media at the next meeting because now there's a much more comprehensive social media policy you guys can look at. Yeah. And I'm going to send it to you ahead of time in hopes that you will approve it at the next meeting. And we. I think last time we talked, we weren't, uh, we, we had wanted to wait a little time, so I think you got some traction there. Yeah. Um, the social media policy you should have anyway. Mm -hmm. Social media policies for front page forum. <laughs> <laughs> for front page forum and, um, you know, for website, everything. Yeah. No, so, I think that's a good yeah. idea. It's a whole different subject than the Facebook. Right. And so, all right. Pick it on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some clean permits, it looks like. And the other thing, winter maintenance to the town hall. <laughs> that what she had talked about, that's truck seating. And also that's what we've already basically done, right? That's what we've mm -hmm. done. That's for next year, you know, that they, uh, for that amount of money, they'll clean both furnaces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we won't end up with an eight hundred dollar, nine hundred dollar bill again. And the other stuff is fairly standard. All right. You done with me? We are, Cheryl. Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks, Ralph. And everyone else as was well. That, was that sludge done? Yeah. No, I'm John, thanks for uh, getting in to sign these. No, oh, sure.
just wanted to um, show you what Katrina put together for um, Shane. And nice little binder. No, here, but the, no, no. Uh, so we can more keep track, but uh, agreement with the uh, Humane Society. But what I like is now there's everything, there's a form. Someone has a, a complaint, you can fill it out, they get a copy. If there's another dog involved or animal, they get a copy. And the, the town can keep a, a copy as well. So we'll have more. Um, and I have a whole box of those in the office. I didn't get them that way. Just so there's. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So we'll be in touch with him to make sure he uses oh, that. Be the next. I got it. <laughs> That with a little kick in the butt there sometimes. That yes, the because he also has not billed us for this quarter. So Cheryl told me to tell you that too. Okay. All right. Oh, yes. Do you want me to get this so you can read it? He told me, so it was a company made it, this the disinfectant thing. And he bought it. I met with the owner's son. He mm -hmm. came down and he thought it was such a great pot of product. See what it is. Sure. Mm -hmm. he, he bought the company. This is pure. Thank you uh, for coming tonight. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be done in just a moment here. We're just waiting to close out a couple signatures. And a motion from John to close this up. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.